Hey, beautiful souls. Are you ready to transform your life with the power of light? Introducing our revolutionary light therapy patches. These little wonders harness the natural healing energy of light to rejuvenate your mind, body, and spirit. Imagine waking up every day feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to conquer your goals. Our patches work to reduce inflammation, boost energy, and enhance overall well-being all while you go about your day. Don't miss out on this game changer. Visit jenniferpilates.com to learn more and to grab your light therapy patches today. Your transformation awaits. Take the first step now. Feel the light, feel the change. Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hi there, and welcome to today's show. I'm so excited to have with us our guest, Lee Jones. Lee is an experienced astrologer and intuitive with over 22 years of experience. At a young age, Lee found her talent for astrology and other forms of divination. Though it took her a long time to accept her gifts, eventually she realized she could use them to improve the lives of people who were struggling, and that's always appealed to her on an emotional level. Lee has always had a deep need to understand the world around her, and as a result, she's learned a lot about traditional divination methods, including tarot, astrology, and numerology. Lee is currently living in the Appalachian Mountains with her two kitty cats. She is also the magic behind Smoky Mountain Love Alchemy on the platform Keen. Welcome to the show, Lee. Thank you for having me. It's nice to hear from you. I know. I'm so excited. So a little bit of background about us is that I was really looking to dive further into some astro cartography, and Lee had been so great at sort of helping guide me, look at places and look at lines. So had to have her on and really wanted to talk more about astrology and dive deeper into everything astrology. So Lee, take us back to when you realized that you had gifts. So I was eight years old when I first started doing astrology. It wasn't so much a realization of gifts so much as it was just a love of Sailor Moon. One thing that a lot of people don't know about Sailor Moon is that astrology is interwoven in the show's mythology and everything like that, especially like the symbolism of the show. So I got really into that and I just started researching and then I realized I could use it when I was about 13 years old and I started doing readings for other people. I didn't really see it as a gift until I was in my 30s, honestly, because I didn't really think about it like that. How fascinating. And when you think about astrology, what is it that lights you up? What fascinates you about it? The fact that there's always something more to learn. There's always a new rabbit hole to go jumping down. Right now, I'm currently doing draconic astrology, but... In the past, I jumped down the rabbit hole of astrocartography, horary, electional charts, you name it. I do a lot of political astrology nowadays just for fun. Oh, I love that. So tell me, the latest astrology that you're working on, what is that all about? I don't know that I've heard of it, but I don't know that I know what it is. So right now, what I'm doing is a Pluto and Aquarius retrospective based on the life and work of Victor Hugo, specifically... I'm doing an analysis of the Hunchback of Notre Dame and the symbolism behind it and what it represents emotionally to people who survived the French Revolution in comparison to what's likely to happen now in the here and now. Ooh, this sounds so deep. So because as we know, history repeats itself and astrology doesn't lie. So I feel like you're leading us up to talk about the revolution that looks like we're about to walk into. Well, I'm very hopeful it's a technical revolution rather than an, rather than an actual physical revolution, just because nobody wants bloodshed, like what happened in the French Revolution. The Red Terror is not something that I hope repeats itself. Right. But at the same time, Pluto and Aquarius does represent the revolution of the common man. So I think we do need to look at history, especially like 
I don't know if you saw this, but Haley Bieber actually said something along the lines of let them eat cake. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are really upset about it because of what's going on in Rafa. No, I didn't. I, I don't know that about what Haley said. No. So tell us what that yeah. means. For those of us that don't know, what's going on with all of that? So Let Them Eat Cake was supposedly, it was first said by Marie, supposedly by Marie Antoinette in response to the famines that the French people were experiencing and the starvation that they experienced as a result of that. And Haley Bieber said it in response to the fact that she was wearing a pretty dress and didn't realize that there was a genocide going on. (laughs) It was kind of awful. And we're also seeing a lot of resentment towards the billionaire class specifically, as is seen by, I don't know if you remember the, the submarine incident where a bunch of billionaires went down to the bottom of the ocean and didn't come back up again. Mm-hmm. But people on the internet means that to death. And it was both disturbing and a little bit fun to watch, to be honest. Okay. So like, bre- not fun. Fun is the wrong word. It was interesting to watch from an astrological perspective because it's just like, you're kind of watching history repeat itself and you're watching people blow off steam about their very real frustrations online. What part of that, for those that maybe aren't in tune and don't know, what part of that are you referring to history repeating itself? So specifically what we're seeing now is we're seeing income disparities. We're seeing wars occurring over and over again. We're seeing the upper class kind of attempt to oppress the lower class again. And we're also seeing people lash out about that and get angry about what's going on. For lack of a better term, because I don't know of a better term to use, it's there's a lot of blood in the water, mm-hmm. so to speak. And I'm so sorry to get dark on a podcast. No, I think that's a really great, a great way to describe it. And so when you talk about, because there is a lot of blood in the water right now, when you're doing your research with your astrology and you're looking out at the rest of this year into 2025, maybe you're going into 2026. What are you seeing astrologically playing that potentially we can say potentially can play out in ways that it looks like history is repeating itself? Cause there are so many astrologers talking about in some ways, I think a lot are actually downplaying and being very coy on what we're walking into. Well, keep in mind that astrology it can be very blunt sometimes. And the reason why we're being coy is because we don't want to create the circumstances that we're so afraid of. Okay. And I want to be clear. I'm not saying that this is definitely going to be a thing. I'm very afraid that people are going to riot if president Trump is arrested. Well, I think, Um, yeah, I think that's a given. Yeah. yeah, And not just riot. Yeah. I think that, I think the January 6th riots in, 2021, I want to say, mm-hmm. were just a taste of what's to come. And apparently that was a very close call, like in terms of uprisings. That was a very close call for our country. Mm-hmm. So I'm honestly a little bit frightened about right. what's to come because it's... Well, the astrology looks a, li- it looks a little harsh if you look at it through this summer looks to next year. A little harsh? No, it's... <laughs> I that that's certainly a, a way of putting it. No, it. I can't think of a. But I can't think of anything worse. Yeah. To say about it, then we could very well end up in an uprising. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And yeah, it's and I'm not looking. Yeah, you're not looking forward to it. Well, I think it's interesting. I saw something I thought of you the other day. I saw an astro photographer online, and she was talking about she was being coy about what's coming right now for the United States. And she was like, I've got my passport. I looked up where my good lines are and I'm piecing out because I don't need to be here for this. She didn't allude to a lot, but, and she said, you know, I'm not running, but I'm choosing to go live my best life. And I was very intrigued by that statement. Hey there, preparedness champions. Are you ready to safeguard your future with the ultimate survival gear? Meet My Patriot Supply, your one-stop shop for all things emergency preparedness. From long-lasting food storage to top-notch survival gear to my favorite, water filtration, 
we've got you covered. Imagine having peace of mind knowing you're ready for anything, natural disasters, power outages, or even unexpected events. With My Patriot Supply, you can build a robust emergency plan and protect your loved ones. Don't wait for the unexpected. Act now. Visit jenniferpilates.com and prepare with confidence. Your future self will thank you. Gear up today. Head over to jenniferpilates.com to shop My Patriot Supply along with all of our partners. I would say running is probably a good option right now for a lot of people, especially those who are particularly marginalized and those who might be considered upper class eventually, especially like people who own their own home, people who don't rent, landlords especially. They're going to want to they're going to want to be very careful. There's a lot of resentment towards landlords lately. Interesting. Interesting. I Well, when you look at this, I mean, because I myself have even been advising clients on it's not months, it's not years, we're talking days, we're talking weeks for this next journey. This isn't, it starts in a, few, in a few weeks, I would say. I would say weeks. But in terms of it reaching an apex, it's not going to reach an apex until like, February 2025 is when it reaches its is when it reaches its peak. Mm-hmm. Whenever Saturn enters Aries, that's when things are going to get bloody for the first time, and then it goes back into Pisces, and we've got some stuff we've got to do after that. But then it goes back into Aries, and things are going to get pretty nasty after Saturn and Neptune both enter Aries at the same time, especially when Saturn and Neptune can join. And I'm pretty sure they're going to conjoin in Aries. Mm-hmm. That's going to get nasty. And you said that's, I would say, when was that? Hmm? You said next spring. Is that what you said? February, 2025 is when the ingress starts in Aries at the end of the day. So just be careful, make sure you have your passport updated because you might need it. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're disabled, especially if you're Jewish, especially if you're in the upper class in any capacity, you're going to want to be careful. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it's going to turn violent. I'm really, really hoping it doesn't turn violent. I'm hoping that this time around we don't descend into chaos and violence. But mm-hmm. historically speaking, we never avoided it before. So, right. And we've seen it play out the last, I mean, the last four years when you look at, and we are in an election year and the things that have played out in the summer times with the riots and so on and so forth, you know, the unfortunate things that have gone on that have transpired yeah. uh, on us. And that's, you know, I know, I realize that the magnitude of that is nothing compared to what the astrology you're looking at is forecasting. Yeah. The astrology I'm forecasting is honestly, I'm really hopeful that it's a cyber security war of mm-hmm. sorts, but that's, I realize that that's just my Virgo moon wishful thinking. So <laughs> Right. I feel like we're already in that aspect and we're already in the weather war and we're in the spiritual war. So it's how many wars can we have at one time? Although I I probably should retract that statement because we don't want to really see how many different ones can play out all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah. (laughs) So when we look at it, I love that you're studying all the politicalness right now. So do you think when you look at the astrology of it all, I'm sure you look at Trump's chart and the astrology of the United States and the collective at the same time. Honestly, there's a lot of similarity between Trump's chart and the and the chart of Napoleon after he went to Elba, like the Isle of Elba. So honestly, at first, I do see him walking away from this. And then I see him eventually being incarcerated on the Isle, like on his quote unquote Isle of Elba again. Like, there's a lot of karma going on there. And I've got to be honest, as far as looking at the chart of the United States, like the Sibley chart, I've tried to avoid doing that over Mm -hmm. the past couple of months just for the sake of my own mental health. Like, I can't leave the country. So, what are we going to do anyway? At the end of the day, it's not looking pretty. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it isn't looking pretty, right? And so let's look at it. For those that 
are either choosing not to leave the United States or don't have the option to leave the United States, or maybe they think we sound a little crazy and that's okay too. It wouldn't be the first time. Let's transition into talking about astrocartography, how we met. And of course, of course. yeah, if you would explain a little bit for maybe those out there that don't know what astrocartography is, and then we can like kind of take a deeper dive. What is it? What do you love about it? So astrocartography, to put it very simply, is a visual representation of relocation astrology. With relocation astrology, what you basically do is you take your natal chart and then you assume that you were born in a different location so that you can see how things play out in your relocation chart. Which is something that you and I were doing. And then what I loved was that you take the chart of the relocation and then you were going back and forth with my birth chart. Yeah, I, I and that's something that I really like doing because what I like doing is seeing the condition of the relocation chart in comparison to the condition of the natal chart and seeing like how that dynamic changes as you move throughout the world. Because as we know, moving definitely does have an impact on our mental health, our journeys, and ultimately our upward trajectory because there's more or there's greater or fewer opportunities depending on where you go. Right. As we all know. So, right. Which is so cool. So I've got some questions as we dive into this. So for the average bear that knows nothing and say they're going to go to astro.com and they're going to attempt to look this up, which Lord knows we've all tried. When you are starting with someone's chart, like you were doing with mine, are you looking at the travel lines or are you looking at the local chart, the local space chart? I'm looking at, I'm looking at the local space chart first. Okay, because we want to um, help. The travel guide lines people. give you a good. The travel lines give you a good baseline, but when you look at the travel lines, you need to make sure that you understand the condition of the planet that is represented by the travel lines. Mm, very. So, good. for instance, moving to your Venus line isn't going to be great if Venus has fallen in combat, whereas moving to your Mars line might actually be okay if Mars is in domicile and is pretty dignified in your chart and is also your chart ruler. Okay. I love that you said that because, right, some people will be like, oh my gosh, don't move to Mars. Or we know, for instance, right now, I'm currently again smack dab on my Pluto line and some people would like melt down to hear that. And I can say that, yes, while Pluto is incredibly challenging, it also can be incredibly empowering if you can get to that other side. So I kind of think like every planet sort of has that yin yang light darkness to it. Yeah, like I definitely wouldn't suggest people move to their Pluto line. Like moving to the Pluto line is not advisable because Pluto is an outer planet. Pluto doesn't actually care that much about people in general. And when you move to your Pluto line, what that usually means is that you're moving to a line where, to a location, I suppose, where Pluto is conjunct an angle. So whatever Pluto is conjunct, that angle and the opposite of that angle is going to have a lot of difficulty. So... Hey there, wellness lovers. Are you ready to transform your fitness journey? Dive into my on-demand Pilates fusion workouts and meditations. Imagine blending the best of Pilates, yoga, and mindful meditation all at your fingertips. Get strong, flexible, and zen anytime, anywhere, 24-7. Head over to jenniferpilates.com for your special exclusive subscription discount. Don't miss out on this ultimate fusion experience. Elevate your body, your mind, and your spirit today. Let's move and meditate together. Hey, beautiful souls. Are you ready to elevate your health and wellness journey? Join my Empowered Within Holistic Health and Wellness private community on Facebook. Imagine having a supportive tribe where you can connect, share, and grow together. Receive exclusive access to holistic health tips, empowering workshops all designed to help you thrive. Head over to jenniferpilates.com to join our Empowered Within Holistic Health and Wellness community today. Don't miss out on this transformational experience. Empower your mind, body, and spirit today. Let's embark on this journey together. Head over to jenniferpilates.com to join our Empowered Within Holistic Health and Wellness community today. I'll see you there. Okay. So what would the angle be? I don't know that I know what that means. 
Okay, so the angles are the ascendant, the descendant, the IC, and the midheaven. First house cusp, seventh house cusp, fourth house cusp, tenth house cusp. Those are what we call the angles. And whenever a planet is conjunct an angle, what that means is that planet has a sense of prominence within the natal chart. So if within a relocation chart, if a planet is conjunct an angle, that planet suddenly gains a lot of prominence within that location that you're moving to. Although, of course, the natal chart should maintain priority. Okay. So when we're looking or when you're looking at the chart, do you also, because I was diving a little deeper since the last time you and I spoke, when you're looking at the chart in the local space, do you also look at natal lines and parent lines, if I'm saying that correctly, local lines or geo geodetic lines? Is that my saying that correct correctly? No, I don't. Mostly because if you if you overcomplicate it, you can confuse yourself. And I don't like to confuse my clients or anybody else. You can get a lot of information from them. But as we all know, too much information is overwhelming. Okay. So when we're working together, we're solely looking at the local space, the natal lines, and then you're bringing in the birth chart. Yeah bringing in the birth chart and sometimes depending on what the client wants, I'll bring in the draconic chart, seeing what, and I'll bring in like persona charts if I really, really want to get into it. But aside from that, I try very hard not to overcomplicate things. Okay. I agree. I agree. I think that's great. And what's the draconic chart again? In the layman's terms, the draconic Mm -hmm. would basically be a map of your soul as it was when it was created. So if you believe in reincarnation, you believe that this isn't your first life, right? Right. Your soul was created at some point. And if you consider the natal chart to be your life journey, which I do, then you can consider the the draconic chart to be your soul's journey, sort of, if that makes any sense. Totally makes sense. And activation. Now, hmm? Where do you find that chart? Astro, you just scroll down. Oh, I don't know that I've ever done me, that before. Let me see if I can't share this. Share. Only the host can share in this meeting. Okay. Oh, wait. Well, uh, here, I can change. Hold on. I can change that for you. Oh, That's yeah. Right. There's a mobile website. So we're just going to look at my chart because it's what I've got. Sure. And then you go all the way to the bottom. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it says dr- draconitic. I've always seen it spelled draconic, but whatever. <gasps> okay. Um, got it. I see that. And did you see how I did that? Like I just scrolled down to the bottom of that list and you can see it. Yeah. And you'll see that my chart, that my draconic chart is very different from my natal chart. So let me show you my natal chart. You'll see that I have a 16 degree Virgo sun and a 15 degree Virgo Venus with a 17 degree Sagittarius moon in my draconic chart, which is very different from natal chart, which let me show you. Okay. But the aspects are kind of the same because what the draconic chart specifically is a calculation of your chart as it would be if everything was moved to where the north node is at zero degrees Aries. And why would we want that? So zero degrees Aries is basically considered to be the start of the universe. Like what, what happened when the universe was born happened at zero, de- when the north node was at zero degrees Aries is the theory behind it. I don't know if that's actually true, but what I do know is that the draconic chart, when things in the draconic chart are activated, intense Mm -hmm. things tend to happen to the, to the, to the person whose natal chart you're, you're studying. Fascinating. And like, as you can see, my natal chart is very different from my Mm -hmm. draconic chart. Right. Anyway, let me stop sharing my screen now. (laughs) So when we were looking at the astro cartography lines for me, were you looking at the... (laughs) I can't say that word. Tridonic? Draconic chart? Draconic, yes. Uh, thank you. I can do that if you want me to later. I didn't think that that was something you wanted me to do. I had no idea time. about it. Had no idea about it. Right. We were solely just looking at like locations and things and checking things out. Yeah. Honestly, most of the time, I would say that unless you seriously want to understand your past life and your past self, the draconic chart isn't that important. It's only if you kind of want to understand like your karma, your past life, your past self, Mm -hmm. the past and your future trajectory as it is in, in the narrative of your soul rather than the narrative of your life. 
if we're just looking at the natal chart, it's fine. The natal chart does very well. Keep it simple if you want to keep it simple. Got it. Okay. Understood. That may, that makes complete sense. But I could see for those people who do like to do past life regressions that now maybe this might pique their interest to go dive a little deeper into something. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually studying Zephonic Astrology a lot right now. Because I'm studying President Trump's draconic chart just to see what his karma is in relation to everything. And he's got a lot of similar placements to Napoleon, honestly, is something that I've noticed. That's fascinating. It's fascinating and a little troubling, considering the history of Napoleon. (laughs) True. (laughs) True. (laughs) Very true. Well, I can't wait to hear how that all plays out. We'll have to have you back to talk about that when you're done doing all the research and and, uh, see what happens with all of that. That's really fascinating. So if someone came to you, like I did, like when we were talking about astrocartography and I was just like, I just want to be happy in life. I just want to go somewhere where I'm just going to be happy and like things can fall into place, which I'm sure is pretty generic, but I'm sure a lot of people ask that. Where do you guide them to? I would say look for the benefic of sex or the benefic with the greatest amount of of dignity. So basically, some traditional astrologers believe that your benefic of sex, so it changes based on whether you have a day or a night chart, it's, it's like an entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they believe that the benefic of sex becomes the benefic that you need to lean in most strongly towards. And then I also look at the natal chart and I see which benefic has the greatest planetary dignity. And then I guide the person to the benefic line that has the greatest amount of dignity in their natal chart. For instance, in your mm-hmm. case, what I look for is Jupiter being your chart ruler in your new location. And what we ended up what we ended up settling on was you moving back to Arizona. I okay. think yeah, we did talk about that. So is that because we just looked at the Jupiter being there, or is that like in whole, even though we were looking at that location, Jupiter <laughs> was that prominent in my chart? Does that, did I say so that Jupiter is a little bit isolated in your natal chart, if I recall correctly. But that being said, whenever you switch, whenever you move to Arizona, your Sagittarius switches from being, I think, a Scorpio rising to a Sagittarius rising, and Jupiter all of a sudden becomes your local chart ruler. And that ultimately is what I was looking for, just to see if that would make you happiest compared to California. And ultimately, what I decided was that California wasn't going to make you very happy at all compared to Arizona. So, and you said Sagittarius rising. Yes. In the local space chart, you are, for the location that we chose, you are a Sagittarius rising. Versus in Not my... in your natal chart. Okay. Not in your natal chart. I was going to say versus in, in my real life. local space chart. In my local You're what? space chart. I was going to say versus my real life. <laughs> yeah, versus your real life. Real life being yeah. a Taurus. Okay, got it. Okay, how fascinating. I remember you saying something about a grand trine, like leaning into a, the grand trine. Oh, yeah. You have a grand trine involving Jupiter in your chart. So, and that's something that makes your life a lot, like, if you lean into it, it can make your life a lot easier. And if you lean away from it, you can kind of become isolated from it. So it's important to lean into it rather than leaning away from it. Got it. So for a layman, such as myself, if I were to go back and pull up the local space chart, would it be best for me to go, well, where is Jupiter and I should lean into wherever Jupiter is or not necessarily? Not necessarily. I didn't look at your Jupiter line there. What I looked at was specifically like where Jupiter was most activated Mm -hmm. in your natal chart and your relocation chart. The lines are a great starting point, but your relocation chart is going to be the best option for you. So I know when you and I talked, I had come to you with two specific locations. We looked at Arizona, we looked at California. Now, if I hadn't come to you with a specific location, and just said, I'm thinking of moving. I just want to be happy. I want unicorns and rainbows. Where should I go, Lee? Do you think you would have said one of those locations? Or do you think you would have picked something altogether differently? 
honestly, I think I probably would have picked Taiwan for you. Really? Are you serious? Are you being are you being facetious? I'm being completely serious. Taiwan. Let me let me look first. Oh. So let me look first because I'm just looking at my notes right now. But okay, I find this fascinating. Taiwan. You seemed kind of limited in where you could go, but the thing is, Taiwan seemed like it was the closest thing to home that we could find for you. Seriously. If that makes any sense at all. No, Mm -hmm. but I'm so freaking intrigued. Okay. So if there was a place after Taiwan, (laughs) because I just, I'm not feeling Taiwan, but now I am going to like look into Taiwan. That's so interesting. So that's like a place that you feel that everything sort of just comes together. Yeah, like the thing is, like there's greater, there's just enough competition, just enough activity in Taiwan that you'd be able to have an active career. You'd be able to engage in a lot of soul level healing, but you wouldn't be like constantly in the middle of it like you would be, like you currently are. You'd have a lot of intellectual activity, so you'd be able to have intellectual fun. You'd be able to do a lot of research. It's a great place for you to learn. And it's also within spitting distance of, Um, your Venus line but the thing that draws me to Taiwan the most is that you is that your Jupiter descendant line is running through Taiwan so you'd be able to meet somebody there oh and you'd be leaning very heavily into your grand shrine a little bit just by having Jupiter on your descendant line wow but I was under the impression that we were restricted to the United States so well, but now that we've opened up this Pandora's box, I think that's fascinating. So if there was something after Taiwan, happy medium. Medium, actually. Really? Yeah, because happy medium, I'm assuming what you mean by that is not necessarily so focused on the Jupiter of it all. Right. Generally speaking, the reason I chose Turkey has Venus, Moon, and Jupiter MC running through it at the same time. And plus, Turkey is a very beautiful place. There's just, Mm -hmm. honestly, I'm kind of envious. All of my bad lines are running through Turkey. So I'm really happy that you actually get to visit Turkey and have a good time there. Wow. Yeah, I would love to go to Turkey. How fascinating. I've I've only, in Europe, I've been to Holland and a few places around there, but that was it. And that was a a long time. Oh, yeah. I... So your polar lines are all sort of clustered together near Holland and near that general area. I would not suggest Europe for you. Good to know. I almost moved to Holland, believe it or not, many moons ago. I ended up in Colorado instead. I mean, I could see you being happy, but I could also see it being a little bit chaotic at the same time. Mm -hmm. And given your chart, I don't think you're really the type of person who enjoys chaos. No, thank you, Pluto line. I'm kind of done. (laughs) (laughs) I'm done with chaos. I would like a little more sereneness. Serenity can be hard to come by, but I definitely understand. Yes. Okay. So that's all right. So I'm going to throw out two more things to you because this is hysterical to me. Another place that maybe is not in the United States that you're like, this would be pretty cool too, if you wanted to experience life, where would that be? Honestly, if you just wanted the experience, this is just a place to visit, not a place that you would necessarily want to live. I would say Brazil. Interesting. I love how none of these places are on any of my bucket lists. Okay. Okay, Brazil. Fascinating. Didn't see that coming. Okay. So now if I bring it home, what about Montana? (laughs) We're going to go from Montana. Montana. Let me see Montana. So Montana, I would say Montana is a good, a good choice. Definitely a good choice for visiting. Ooh, I do like that Venus line running through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say Montana is a good choice. For a visit. Yeah, for a visit, maybe to live, but it could be a little boring. The thing is, you also don't seem to like boredom. You seem to be very invested in healing and in moving forward with your life. This is not... This is going to be a place for you where you can relax, where you can enjoy your life, where you can just have a good time, not Mm -hmm. worry so much about things. Okay, got that. So now taking away everything that we've looked at and not mentioning where I currently am. If I said, okay, I am limited to the United States, what are the top two places you're going to send me to? 
Arizona, Texas. Seriously. That excites me. The, the Arizona, you know, that excites me. Texas, I find fascinating. Okay, tell me why Texas. Texas is mostly just a place to visit. I would say okay. Texas because it's a place you've kind of always wanted to go. And it's something that you should probably, maybe not always wanted to go, but it's a place your soul oh, yeah. always wanted to go. Well, my soul needs to and get over it. <laughs> your soul I've needs driven, to get over it. But. I've driven through that state at least 20 times now. At least. Driving all yeah. my cross countries. Yeah. How fascinating. I honestly, I'd say that the best possible place for you in Texas is Austin because that's closest to your Neptune line. It's a good place to visit. It's not a good place to live because when you live on your Neptune line, you feel a bit like you're drowning, but that's right. actually kind of fun whenever you're visiting, right? I don't know, Lee. I'm not sure I want to be drowning when I'm traveling. <laughs> oh, no, you're not going to be drowning when you're traveling. You're just going to be like swimming in the ocean a little bit, like floating. Okay. That's cool. I'm down with that. Okay. So I thought you would be, you seem like the, you seem like the type of person who likes the ocean. <laughs> I'm a, yes, definitely. You know, I do. I love my ocean. So the top two places in the United States to actually live, not just visit, what are we down to? Arizona, Montana, possibly California, but I would avoid California solely because your Mars line is just running through there. And you don't seem like the type of person who likes chaos, to be honest. Also, well, we, Nevada, surprisingly, is actually pretty good. Interesting, Nevada. I've spent some time, not a lot of time, but I've spent some time there. How interesting. Montana, I have not, but my heart always calls there, or maybe it's just because I like the show Yellowstone. Well, I just find this so fascinating, how the deep dive that you do and how you connect the nail charts and how you can help someone's mind to stretch past what they may be looking at. Like Taiwan. I mean, who saw that coming? I didn't see Taiwan coming, but I can tell you that I'll be Googling today. I'm going to Google some things about Taiwan. I'm going to Google a little bit about Brazil and Turkey. Oh my gosh. I had a friend that lived in, in, in um, Istanbul and yes, I would love to visit Turkey for sure. That would be amazing. My so. favorite thing about Turkey is the cat. I'm actually trying yes. to convince my partner to let me go just like the people there, they take care of the cats and it's just like people who take care of cats can't possibly be bad. I have, I agree with you. You know that I too am a fur mama with my two kitties, babies. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't Tur is Turkey the place that has the cat Island or am I thinking? Of uh, else? That's Japan. Oh. I think Turkey has a cat Island and I think the United States also has a cat Island, but I think, Japan is the one that has the cat island, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Turkey and the cats, like, it's so important, you know. And God help anybody that calls me and asks me how my cats are, I get very insulted. We have to ask how the babies are doing. Exactly. Yes. My absolutely. baby is currently looking at me like she wants to kill me because I'm not petting her. Oh, <laughs> sweet baby girl. Oh, my goodness. So this has been, oh my gosh, so much fun. Like you've done so many cool deep dives. I absolutely love it. I love that you have brought us all the way from a revolution to let's visit Turkey. I think that we have, oh my goodness, <laughs> covered so much. So I want to ask this. I always ever ask everyone this one question. What is one thing that maybe no one knows about you, Lee? No one knows about me? Um, Almost no one. Yeah. I'm currently starting a yoga practice. Yay. Love that for you. <laughs> I think that's super and, exciting. Uh, I'm pretty open about my life because I use my, my astrological chart and a lot of my deep dives mm -hmm. to protect the privacy of my clients. And plus, I feel like a lot of people don't really appreciate the value of openness. But that being said, something that nobody knows about me, I'm getting really into skincare lately. And just self-care in general lately. That's beautiful and so important. And I'm also very soon to be engaged. Yay! Now that's cool. I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. I am now too. My partner and I have been through a lot, but they're kind of chewing me out a little bit about not wanting to get engaged. So, I mean, I do want to get engaged. I'm just kind of terrified of the concept of marriage. So... 
Well, you just have to pull out your chart and chart the right time. Indeed. Absolutely. I love this. Oh my gosh. You have been amazing. Lee, will you share with our community and our listeners, where is the best place that they can connect with you? On Keen, I would say Smoky Mountain Love Off of Me is the best place to connect with me on Keen. As far as social media is concerned, my Twitter, which is Smoky Mountain, I'll send it to you and you can share it in your Absolutely. link description, but it's Smoky Mountain Alchemy, it's spelled in a very specific way. <laughs> Perfect. And you can connect with me on there and set up appointments with me. Wonderful. That sounds great. And of course, all of Lee's contact information and the links to be able to get in touch with her and to book with her will be over in the show notes at jenniferpilates.com. As we close out the show today, Lee, what is one last piece of inspiration or perhaps advice that you'd like to leave with us today? Always do the stuff that makes your soul light up. The universe will take care of you one way or the other. But if you do what makes your soul light up, you will never have to worry about it. And I know that sounds trite in a world where everybody's worrying all the time. But that's something I've really come to learn during my time being an astrologer. I think that's so beautiful. And it's something that I literally want to write on a post-it note and put it on my bathroom mirror and look at that every morning. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Lee, thank you so much for coming on, for sharing your incredible insights, for deep diving with us. I mean, who knew? I didn't know we were going to do politics today. You know, I really feel like we might have to have you back so that we can follow the political train as it unfolds and help people stay grounded. Because I feel that, you know, with astrology, it is grounding and knowledge is powerful, but only when you choose to use it and do something with it. And I think that what you're doing is very powerful. And I thank you for that. Thank you for having me on your show. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share what I've learned. I, and I am sorry for getting a little dark there for a minute. Fortunately, talking about American politics, you can't really avoid it lately, can you? Absolutely. I don't think that it's dark. I think that it's real. And that's what we're all about is being real and being authentic and not, you know, sugarcoating anything. And people need to know the truth. And that's what's most important. I'm glad I was able to help. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lee. And as we say, until next time, may you live an empowered life from within. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within. Hey, beautiful souls, are you ready to elevate your health and wellness journey? Join my Empowered Within Holistic Health and Wellness private community on Facebook. Imagine having a supportive tribe where you can connect, share, and grow together. Receive exclusive access to holistic health tips, empowering workshops all designed to help you thrive. Head over to jenniferpilates.com to join our Empowered Within Holistic Health and Wellness community today. Don't miss out on this transformational experience. Empowered your mind, body, and spirit today. Let's embark on this journey together. Head over to jenniferpilates.com to join our Empowered Within Holistic Health and Wellness community today. I'll see you there.